Did you know that 90% of the world's millionaires invest in real estate? Well, I'm Angel with the Academy Presents Real Estate Investing Rocks, and I'm here to help you if you want to go for your piece of that pie. The part you say about it being isolating, I mean, it's, I don't want to say that like you start to outgrow your friends, but your circle changes and it, it's like your friends don't understand. Yeah. And so they have a hard time being happy for you because they don't get it. Yeah. And so it's kind of like you just, you get to a point where you're, what you do is beyond that friendship. And I mean, I remember when I first came to that realization and it, it hurt, it hurt my heart because I mean, I had people that had been in my life for, you know, 15, 20 years. And I had to realize that those people, when I would go to my, I, I would go with them to, with my ideas and they'd be like, you can't do that. You're never going to be able to do that. that. That's a crazy idea. You need to just stay where you are. You, you just need to be happy where you're at. I still wanted to keep going. And then when I got in with this group of real estate investors and like, the majority of my friends started becoming investors. It was like, I could go to someone with what would have previously be considered a crazy idea. And instead of them saying, Oh, you can't do that. They're like, Oh my God, how can I help you? Nice. How can I help you do this? This is an amazing idea. How can I help you do this? Yeah. And it's just, it's 100% different. Yeah, that is so true. Um, the, um, when you build a community where you can actually learn from, instead of having to convince them to, um, you know, to do business with you. It's empowering. It really is. Um, and that's one of the things that, I mean, we met with the, uh, um, the networking that um, Jay offered, which is the mastermind. And when you find a community that uplifts you instead of like suppressing your enthusiasm, it's empowering. It really is. And and it it gives you like the wings pretty much because you already are out there you're contemplating flying but you're like <laughs> like uh looking around can you push me and your friends are like no you're crazy i'm not gonna push you but when you find a community where say you know like yeah let's let's do this how can i contribute how can how can i be of value to that idea and um the other thing is you are the um uh, you are the person like the average of the five people that surrounds you the most more often I want to be around smarter people than me you know I want to I want you know I still love my friends everybody and my family but I want to be surrounded with people that has bigger minds than me bigger dreams than me and that's what's going to empower you and it, do, it doesn't have to be at what at what level you are it doesn't matter what level you are there's always smarter people than you and that's the people that you should be drawn to that you should be following um and I, always to me is like how can i be a contribution how can i help you and the people that are starting like how can i help you because i know that you're gonna uh, not just go at the level that i am you're gonna go even higher and i want you to be higher i want you to be uh, to, to say i have a friend that does this or has this or whatever like i want to be that part of your building block and i think when you reach that desire of not just like i want to do for myself like you stop fighting and the deals or the people or the um opportunities will come to you to facilitate others success and that that is like better than oh, i don't know it's just <laughs> it's just empowering empowering to your spirit empowering to to your mission to you know empowering your friends and family um my my brother i have been drilling this idea you need to get more rentals you need to invest in this and finally he got into it and i'm like yes you know it's nothing better than to see uh, other other people succeed especially if it's within your family and your friends um, but you're right sometimes we just kind of are looked as yeah you're out of your mind <laughs> well let me under let help you understand you know and that's just the beautiful part of just being content and being uh, fulfilled with your life that, that you just like okay I have enough <laughs> let me help you at one point um, I think building up to the level that we find ourselves um, it is a struggle and it it is not easy so for all your audience there that are like you know well how can I get to that 
reach out to people that has done it, that, that has the experience and that is willing to, to help you. It is going to be hard. Like nobody, I can't lie to you and say, oh, you, you wake up in the morning and you have like 32 units. No, it doesn't happen like that. But you have to reach out to people. I assure you that I'm not going around and say, hey, do you need help? You look like you need help. No, you have to come to me and say, I, I would like the uh, guidance. I would like a phone call, or, you know, but if you don't reach out, likely you're not going to get there. So just. Well, and a lot of people are afraid to ask someone for help because they don't realize that we're so excited about what we do. But we want to help everybody to listen. And, but if you don't, it's back kind of what you said um, a few minutes ago, you said, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And some people look at others and they're like, well, that person's got, you know, they've already got several properties. They've already been doing this for so long. Why would they want to help me? It is seriously an addiction. Once you get into this, it's like, you don't want to stop. You want to keep going and going and helping others and seeing how many other people can, can join you at the table. Right. right. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, no, absolutely. I think that part of what makes it enjoyable at one level is like, you know, we don't have to keep doing it, but we still do another deal. And it's like, yay, mm -hmm. you know, you learn from that. The part of giving back or helping others that that has to be part of your mission, part of your person. Um, and it doesn't have to be like, you might have one property and that's okay because you can still help others to make that first, like first step, you know, um, and making mistakes. It's okay. Like, everything is okay i swear <laughs> like um if it can be fixed why do you have to worry about it that you know there's there is a book that i read it's pretty much like why should you worry if, if it can be fixed and I may, maybe part of it is like my my job as a, uh, as an anesthesia provider like my ultimate goal there is to provide safe care the patient woke up yes like <laughs> i don't remember anything yes that's awesome that's success you know um so in the real estate, one of our sellers that actually become our friend, and he's like, why is it that nothing worries you about the property? That property was a disaster. Like there is so many wrong things with that thing, that place is as now rented. And uh, anyway, so it's past that. But it was like, no permits that he had done some work and electricity things and oh, everything. Oh. Past that. Oh yeah, he had, he didn't have an AC unit or laundry washer. That was just a disaster. But anyway, he, he, he's like trying to help us to get this, you know, get this uh, property up going. And, and he's like, why you always say that? Okay, thank you. Yeah. Like that's, that's awesome. I'll take care of that. And, and I said, maybe because I just finished taking care of a trauma patient that uh, like the life was in my hands and I was just like trying to provide some safe care. So in the real estate is so much forgiveness. Like you, you can do so many things wrong and nobody dies, you know, like <laughs> everything is fixable. So for the people that are like, well, what about this? What about that? We'll fix it. Like, just bring it to somebody, bring that idea to a group or to a, a person that is mentoring you. I guarantee you everything is fixable. So don't be afraid. Just fall forwards if you have to, <laughs> you know, take the first step. <laughs> it is very doable. Well, I think that um, something else you've kind of brought up here is people talk about their failures, but really when an obstacle is put in our way, we don't always see it as an obstacle. We see it as something that needs to be fixed. How do I fix this? How do I repair it? Not, oh my God, why did this happen to me? This is the most horrible thing ever. It's okay, this happened. How do we fix it? Yeah, it's, it's a mindset. It's a mindset that you don't see that as an obstacle, but you see it as an opportunity. Like it, actually my husband and I talked about, okay, well, that's what we have to pay to learn about the insulation. Like that's what the cost was, you know, things are going to happen. You know, we, we had a house and it, this is for like, you know, walking through a deal, but we had a house, it was in the MLS because people ask, how do you find your deals? You have to diversify. You have to look everywhere and you have to be always looking for a deal. So this house was in the MLS for about three hours before actually I went and drove by. I was happy to, I happened to be in town. I would drop by and I call a realtor and, and I said, hey, we want to make a cash offer on this house. It's like, okay, this is, and they accepted that offer like three hours after it was in, in the market. Had foundation issues. We had to do a new roof. We had to do all windows, like everything. But if you run, if you crush the numbers and it makes sense, People is going to be scared of like, oh, I have to do foundation. No, thank you for that. 
well, that house is making, I mean, it's, it's rented for a very nice amount of money and it's covering all the expenses. We pull all of our money back. We finance our own. So there is so many options, but people will be scared of, well, I don't want to deal with that. Well, we didn't know anything about it. We didn't know anything about foundations that we have to have a couple people. In fact, we have one company that quote O's and I said, well, let's just get at least three, you know? So we got the second one. It was almost half a price. And it was like all the permits and everything they, they handle. So one, don't be afraid of what you don't know. Learn it. Get the experts because you're not going to ever know everything. Get at least three quotes and make sure that all the work is, you know, permitted and everything. But when we um, take on a challenge like that, I said, well, we might lose money, but hey, this is our learning about this and this and this and that. Thankfully, again, you know, you use your resources, you know, like... Um, Mr. Ford said, you don't have to know everything, but you have to have the team that is going to back you up on that. You have to have a phone where you can call and pick up and, 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 and ask questions and they're going to come to you and you have to have the team. And there's a lot of uh, conversations that we can deviate to talk about uh, contractors and how not to be taken advantage of it, especially as a woman. <laughs> and um, you can always use the resources that are gonna be available for you and you don't have to put a gender to it. I have been put in a position where, well, is your husband gonna be, you know, no, I'm not gonna have a husband at the, at the time, you know? And like, this is a business. You don't have to have a, you know, a gender to, a, to treat this as a business. And you know, and, and I, I know there's communities about female investors and it doesn't have to be like that. You treat the business as a business. You Do you see Uplix living LLC female or male? No. So when you treat your business as a business, you can use that blanket to say, you're dealing with this business. We had recently a person that cuts our yard and he's like, hey, darling, da 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 And I'm like, uh, this is a business line. <laughs> so... <laughs> The darling, <laughs> please cut. So when you have those layers of professionalism, you can easily, you know, say, hey, this is unacceptable. And, you know, we can, again, we can go through <laughs> that side of the, the business, but it, it can be challenging in many, many ways, many ways. When I did my summit in March, it was all female speakers. Oh. I feel like females are really underrepresented in the real estate investing space, not necessarily for realtors, but as real estate investors, I mean, it's like, God, I don't even know. It's probably like 90% male. We probably make up like 10% of it. <laughs> There's mm -hmm. just so dang few of us. And so that's another thing that I really, it's on my heart to try and not necessarily correct, but just to get more people out there so that other women can see, oh, I can do investing and I can do it on my own and I can be good at it because there are plenty of women out there that are absolutely killing it in real estate investing. But most of what we see is men when we go to events and stuff. You know, somebody told me, what'd she call it? She called it the mommy tax, the mom tax, because we have the kids, we have to feed the kids, we have to take care of the kids. And so there's like this tax associated with that. And so um, we sometimes we just can't get out as much. No, absolutely. I think that one of the things that I find, well, I didn't find it challenging. I, I just happened to be like, hey, it's a topic, but I, I don't feel being a minority not able to speak English like I could have so many tags and or added to myself I'm like nope <laughs> you just um you know you have to have systems in place that I guess the military again and me is like okay you don't you don't differentiate this this is a standard procedure and this is how you operate that's it like there's no questions asked. I guess iron in those wrinkles that maybe are not mentioned and like in our tenants we rent to voucher aids it don't matter like they have a beautiful house and even the, the uh, inspector said oh my gosh I will live here <laughs> well a family with section a voucher is going to be leaving, living here you know so we don't we don't make differentiations I could live on any of our units I can establish residence in any of our units that's how we take care of our properties and feel about the residents like if you're living there I assure you I'm gonna I could be living there um, and make it beautiful, make it clean, make it safe. Um, and that's our goal. Part of it is like, that's the housing rules, right? But you just have to leave to up to your standards. And that's the way we make it in our business. Well, you, you talked about your husband a little bit too. I was reading that um, in what you sent me that he was in the military as well. Yeah, he's active duty Navy. He's uh, been in for 26 years. He should be oh, retiring in a couple months. Yeah. 
So we're really excited because he is, uh, so he um, was finishing up his MBA when we, he, you know, he was trying to get into the business and his project was to analyze our business. So I felt like, oh my gosh, here he comes this, like the, uh, in the hospital, we have the joint commission that comes and checks all your sheets and balances. And I'm like, oh my God, you're dissecting our business, <laughs> you know, but he, he pretty much took our business, well, at that time was my business model and dissected on what could be you doing better or what you know all the systems that we are using and um and then you know pretty much he took over like he's been in and join and he make a couple changes and it's been such an asset to like have that company in a way that it's not like he agrees to everything but it's more like he builds into it and definitely i don't i don't see how couples that are not in the same page do it because it must be a struggle like I couldn't just stop talking about the business we have to kind of like okay time for ourselves you know stop stop talking about the business and uh it, well it, it is hard because it's it's a passion it really becomes a passion and and we we've got four kids and um we're trying to get our 12 year old to get kind of start getting into it and understand what's going on and She's not into it at all, but she did, she has her own business. Oh, um, very nice. <laughs> she started, well, one of them she started in third grade and she's in sixth grade now. So she started another one this past year. She, she understands that she wants to work for herself mm -hmm. and she wants to make money for herself. She doesn't want to work for somebody else, but yeah. she hasn't caught the real estate investing bug yet. <laughs> it's only going to take a little bit, but um, she's not quite yet, there yet. <laughs> Hey, and that's the beauty of being an entrepreneur. Like you, you, you will try different aspects of the business. My first business was actually um, in Mexico to establish a tortilleria, like to make tortilla tortillas. It's, it's oh. Act, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, oh, God, that is so, such hard work, though. Oh, so I wasn't running it. I was just, I was going to work because I was do a W-2. So I figured I bought okay. the machine and the, everything. But then, you know. I came here and you can't run a business from distance. I learned that you have to be involved at least for the formation of it. So it didn't take on, but well, when you, when you say tortillas, I think about my great grandma and in her kitchen and she'd have all those little balls of dough on her table <laughs> and she'd like <laughs> and throw it on the gas stove and toss them to us. And we'd be putting butter on them and trying not to yeah. burn ourselves. And nice. No, no, no. This was she would be, she'd be there all day long doing it. Oh gosh. No. <laughs> yeah, no, I can do it. <laughs> So no, um, this was actually a machine that, you know, will make the tortillas. You have to do some process, but anyway, it didn't take on, but it, it, that's, that's part of it. Like you learn, you learn, you listen, and maybe later on, but right now I'm like, call me when your toilet is clogged. <laughs> I don't have to be here eight hours making tortillas. <laughs> yeah. You um, improvise as you move on. And that's all it is. So she might come around. <laughs> uh, well, she'll have to, because eventually we won't be here and she'll be inheriting stuff. So. <laughs> so that's the other thing, like how you train your next generations and generations to come to protect your, you know, investments, because ideally, you know, you build your portfolio and it's not going to go away when you go away, you know, so you have to have that plan. So currently we are um, going on the uh, process to, you know, build a, a trust and, you know legalities of the business and that's another aspect that might be uh, challenging for for a lot but you have to think about that like how many generations do you want to build wealth for because how much money do you need to retire how much money do you need to enjoy for the rest of you i'm sorry but i'm 45 and i'm like counting my my grandma lived to be 104 so uh, you know i might need a little more units i don't know like how do you prepare for that you, those are some conversations that you must address and and you have to have with your kids, if you have kids um, or your next generations to say, well, you have to teach them the value of wealth and the value of preserving that and continuing on. And the business, they don't have to run it, but they probably will use <laughs> companies and they still have to manage the management company. So um, those are some things that cannot be, you cannot be blinded to or just hope that somebody's going to take care of it because if you don't take care of it nobody will well and you care more about your legacy than anybody else will absolutely when, when we're gone our legacy will be our child it'll be our children's legacy and our son has special needs so we really 
and he's profound autism. So we really have to make sure that the girls understand that this is in place so that you don't have to worry about anything but love on your brother. Yeah. Um, and to make sure that he's cared for and then to make sure that they train their own children yeah. in what's going on so that when they are gone, their own children can step up and understand this is the business, this is the legacy that was created for us by our great grandparents or by our grandparents and know that maybe I don't want to run it, but I still need to understand enough about it to oversee the person that is running it. Hello everybody, we wanted to thank you for joining and subscribing to this channel. This is a space where we share our experience, we share other speakers' experience, and all of that is aimed to increase your knowledge base for investing in apartments or any kind of assets in the real estate. If you're looking for specific material, you want some specific material covered, please reach out, let us know at up-plex.com. That's uplex.com. Just reach out, send us a message, and give us some ideas we would love to provide as much value as possible to you and if we know what you're looking for we can do that a lot easier remember our goal is to elevate all of you with our content with our partnerships thank you subscribe and see you around bye see you guys